Hey, how are you doing? I'm Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. And we're going to carry on with our lecture series on machine learning. We've covered all of the, or many of the topics around data preparation. How do we get ready to build our machines? We've also talked about some basic inferential methods like cluster analysis and principal components, multidimensional scaling, and so forth. Let's get into predictive models. Now, what we'll do is we'll talk about the idea of linear regression from the perspective of an optimization problem or minimization problem with regard to a loss function. And that will introduce or at least lead us into the idea of norms, L1, L2 norms. Let's go ahead and tackle that right now. Now, if I had a machine and I want to fit this data set right here, density to porosity in the subsurface, that'd be a very useful machine because I can measure density with a variety of different methodologies, be it by remote sensing or maybe even a well log, you know, geophysical or petrophysically, we can try to go ahead and, and measure density in the rock. And if I can relate that to porosity, that's going to tell me about fluid flow in the subsurface and more specifically about the amount of fluid I can store in the subsurface, how much space. So I'd want to build a model for this. Now we're going to just start with linear regression. Super easy, but it allows us to introduce a bunch of concepts. So our first machine, just go ahead and run linear regression. We'll go ahead and just use SciPy. We can just do the use the lin regress methodology and we can go ahead and build a model. It's great. It's one-stop shop. We got our um, predictor feature. We got a response feature, both as ND arrays. We feed them in and out comes the coefficients of the linear regression model, the slope, the intercept. And then we get a variety of other diagnostics that we will discuss later. And so our model is simply going to be porosity is equal to a slope term multiplied by density plus a constant term. We are predicting porosity with our specific predictor feature density in this case. Now, if we look at the model, it looks pretty good. If we change the data, the model would update. In fact, we could suggest that we have a model that's learning from the data, and we could argue about whether or not this is complicated enough to be considered machine learning or not. But I would say it's machine learning, and I'd love to welcome the arguments around that. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to use that model for the purpose of make predictions. We are now going to make predictions of, for in our case, porosity directly from density, and we'll accept that we have some error terms and so forth. What does the minimization look like that we're actually solving in order to build that linear regression model. We got to find the slope and the intercept components and we're going to do it such that we minimize error. Okay, so what's error? Error would be all of these delta y's, y1, y2, y3, y4, from i equals 1 through n data. Those are all of the individual errors at all of the training data locations. The miss shown here with these dashed lines right here. Now, so how are we going to minimize that? Because we got errors at individual locations, we can't try to minimize the error individually at all of the training data locations. We need to summarize this. This is why we need a norm. And so we have a vector of errors and we need to get it down to a single value that we can try to minimize. And so we could take it, take a summation of all of these squared errors. That would be something we could do. This would be squared error. These are the true values. These are the estimates we make. The difference of them is the error squared sum that. This is now our cost function that we're trying to minimize in order to train our model. So this is our cost function now, but we made a choice that we would square it. Let's talk about how we could do that. Well, we know we want to somehow reduce error with our training the training of the model parameters to the training data, how are we exactly going to represent that error? Now, you could go ahead and sum over all the training data and minimize the just the delta, the error, at every location. But that would be kind of silly because what we'd expect is that you could have a model with a high degree of error, but it would positive and negative error at different locations. And overall, the model could look like it's quite accurate. So we don't want to do that because negative and positive will cancel each other out and the model could look good when in fact it's not good. Well, the L2 norm is commonly applied and that is when we take the summation of the square 
of these differences or error terms. Now one thing I should note, and this came up in class today, often people will do the square root of this, giving us the square root of the sum of the squares. It's okay. People will also do an average, and then it will be called the mean squared error. It's all equivalent. Those are just applying constants to this loss function, so it's not really going to change what's going on with the minimization. Now, this methodology of L2 is also known as Euclidean norm. It's not hard to imagine why, because if we were to change the delta y1, with the error terms, with the delta in x plus squared, the delta in y squared, the delta in z squared, we would in fact be calculating the distance in Euclidean space between two points with those separate offset components in a Euclidean, a Cartesian grid effectively. So we could, that's why we'll consider it or we would call it Euclidean norm. It really is equivalent to the idea of distance, but in our feature space, specifically in our feature space. It's also known as the square root of the sum of squares. If we take the square root or just sum of squares, minimization with L2 norm is often known globally as the least squares approach. Now, the L1 norm is an alternative. And if you look at the construction here, it's not what I stated before. What I said before was, well, can we just sum the errors? And that would cancel out. We could take the absolute value of all the error components, and we get the sum of absolutes. This is also known as the Manhattan norm. If you think about it, in fact, if we have a bunch of error terms and we sum them like this, it's effectively like calculating the distance and you live in a large city and you can't cross the blocks. You can only walk along the X and Y coordinates. You cannot go diagonal. And that's the distance we would get. It, that's why we'd call it Manhattan norm. Those are Manhattan distances. It's also known as the least absolute deviations. Minimization with L1 norm is known as minimum absolute difference, and it could be widely used, and we'll compare and contrast them. Now, we could go a little bit further. Let me just, first of all, let me formalize the definition of a norm. A norm is, a norm of a vector is going to map the vector values to a measure that goes between 0 to infinity. In our current case, we're considering our vector to represent the errors across all of our training data, and so we could work with Euclidean, a Euclidean norm, or the L2 norm, in which case it's giving us effectively the distance in that hyperdimensional space of all those error terms. We could generalize too. There's no reason to stop at L2. We could work with work with any P norm, which would be we can go to any power, third, fourth, fifth power, and so forth. There'd be good reasons why we don't want to do that. I'll comment on the issues around working with the L2 norm, and you'll see there. There are, when we talk about ridge regression and lasso, we're going to talk about this idea of additional norms that can be applied. Beyond this error summary, in the case of ridge regression, we're trying to apply some type of norm to the magnitude of the parameters in the model. And this is what we call regularization. And we will, we will cover that when we get into ridge regression. And we'll talk about the difference between ridge and lasso is really whether or not we use an L1 or L2 norm for that component. So once again, just for clarity, we can compare the L1 and L2 norms. They're going to come up all the time in machine learning. We should be aware of this. The, as I mentioned before, the L1 norm, the least absolute deviation. Sometimes you'll hear it's the least absolute error. L2 norms, least squares. Now this table right here, and I want to give the credit to where I found this appreciation. It's just a really nice blog entry here talking about norms. This table here would describe the difference directly between using an L1 and L2 norm and, and help us in making a choice between the two. The L1 norm is quite robust. In fact, from the standpoint, if your data has outliers, if there's extreme values in your training data set, the L1 norm will not be as sensitive to those outliers. And that's a good thing because remember, remember model variance can be a problem. Plus, sometimes outliers, of course, could be error. They're erroneous data, and we may not track them all down. We don't want a method that's going to be as sensitive. We saw that already when we talked about covariances, and by extension, of course, the correlation coefficient. The L2 norm is not very robust in the presence of outliers. It's a squared statistic, just like the variance, just like the covariance, 
it is very sensitive to those extreme values in the data set. Now, conversely, the L1 norm is not very stable. What do we mean by stability? The L1 norm effectively will, as you change the data, you change the data configuration, it will have jumps. And if you think about why that's happening, it's very interesting. In Manhattan distance, if you have two points like this, you can travel like that, you can travel like that, you can travel across the city blocks like that. And because that, there, there's these paths that are very close to each other and, you know, close to each other in, in, with regard to, you know, getting to the same point, but having different distances. What will happen is, as you move the points around, you move the error terms, you move the training data just a little bit, what will happen is you will jump from one distinctly different path to another one. Well, in L2 system, you imagine we've got two points. We're always going to be just going along that straight line. If I move things around, the solution doesn't change much. It doesn't have those kind of sharp jumps, discrete jumps. That's what we're talking about as far as solution stability. Now, we can extend this and say that, in fact, as I mentioned before, if we have city block distance or Manhattan block distance, we could find this as the same distance as this. And so we could see that there can be multiple possible solutions when we're working with the L1 system. We're going to always have one solution if we deal with L2 along that line will be the shortest distance. So in general, L2 will have, will, will have one solution. Feature selection is built into L1. This is fascinating. When we get into lasso method, we can impose a greater weight on regularization. In fact, put more weight on the cost of having large parameters, and we will drive the parameters to go towards zero. The least square solution is all of the model parameters, the slope terms in a multilinear regression, will all tend together towards zero at this about the same time. A L1 solution causes built-in feature selection. The least important feature will zero out first, then the next one, then the next one. And so the result is, this is really cool for feature selection. And we'll show that when we get into lasso method. But it also means because the coefficients will tend towards a zero, while L2 methods, with the L2 norm, the coefficients tend to kind of go to zero together. They don't want to go to zero. There's often a small value remaining. The result is we get sparse outputs in the solution with an L2 methodology. And so this can, in fact, speed up. There's uh, methodologies that are very good with solving sparse systems. And finally, with regard to, there's a bit of a trade-off there because with L2, we do have some in analytical solutions for the system that we can harness for speed up well, we don't have that benefit with the L2 methodology. So this was a general discussion around norms. We used the context of linear regression to be able to get at them. I will have another lecture right after this where I will go through specific points, the derivation of linear regression, talk about confidence, prediction intervals, and so forth. But I'll leave it right there for this. This is supposed to be a short video. So I hope that was helpful to you. I am Michael Perch. I'm an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin. I teach and work in data analytics, geostatistics, and machine learning. I have a getting a, to be a large set of PhD students, 12 students right now working on the topic. We're happy to work with you. Reach out if you have any questions, if you want to work together on something. And um, also check out my other resources, Twitter, I'm the Geostats guy. And on GitHub, I have a repository with a lot of great, I think great, Examples worked out to support you on your learning journey. All right, everyone, take care. See you. Bye.